What's going on guys? Michael here at 3D Print Everything and I just pulled these parts off the printer and wanted to talk about it. So this is glass filled nylon, nylon GF, glass filled. So around 220 to 280, 80 to 110 on the, or 80 to, to 100 on the bed temperature. And um, this stuff's pretty interesting. So I have printed it maybe one or two other times. It hadn't been too often that I've had a client specifically call for this. And I think the one time I printed it in it, I was expecting a stiffer material. Um, so when I think of nylon, I mistakenly think of it being a stiffer material. It's actually more of a flexible material. If anything, it's almost entirely flexible. Um, I mean, look at this. This does not break when you fully wrap around. If this was PLA, it would have snapped. If it was PETG, it would have deformed. But that kind of stays. So so nylon is kind of interesting. Um, I've printed some other parts of nylon that were extremely dense and just straight nylon, and at least I thought it was straight nylon. And some of the stuff that I've experienced, if you're not super careful when you're buying stuff, especially on Amazon, um, like for instance, I was buying some polycarbonate and I thought it was polycarbonate, but it was actually like... 60% polycarbonate, like 20% PETG, and like 10% ABS. Now, that stuff prints great, and it's extremely hard, and I call it polycarbonate, and I tell other people it's polycarbonate, and I print with it, and I've never had anyone come back and be like, ah, oh, we tested this, and it was mixed with stuff. But I know it prints well, and I'm pretty sure they have that mixture because it prints really well, and it's pretty strong, and it has a real high tolerance. And for that, too, I didn't realize you could mix all three of them. But, you know, I know the polycarbonate gives it, you know, some chemical resistance. I know polycarbonate, nylon, and PETG all are UV resistant. Um, those also make it a higher temperature. Uh, but anyway, it's more about this stuff specifically. So I printed this at 250 on my King Rune KP5L here. I did not even swap out the nozzle to a hardened nozzle. Um, I was only printing a couple of these, so I'm pretty sure it's fine. I do have some stringies uh, with it. This was my first time printing with it, so I didn't know what my retraction needed to be or what my temp settings needed to be. Um, overall, pretty well pleased. You know, the bottom of it is going to have, I, I mean, I can clean the majority of that up, but this isn't quite perfect here. Hopefully they'll like that. I could have printed this like this and had a perfect handle profile, but it would have had a lot of supports and it might have made the supports inside here difficult to remove and I didn't want to damage this. So I decided to print it like this so that all supports would be on the outside like on this one. Um, so this is exactly how it came off the printer. And all these little hairies will be real easy to clean up. I can take like the deburr tool to it or um, some other knife. These things actually come off even with my finger. Um, so we can clean off most of them literally with a nail, which is kind of nice. You wouldn't want to do that with PETG or, I mean, or PLA. If you did that with either one of those, this would be like a bamboo shoot up your nail and it would hurt real bad. Um, which for any of the young people, that was something done in World War II, um, to torture people as they would put bamboo shoots up nails. Um, and I'm sure that's been done elsewhere since then. But yeah, so with nylon though, it's soft enough the these things what ended up happening i'm pretty sure is just retraction as it came up this way and it came over here a little bit leaked out and then it touched the outside so it was already starting to cool and that's what makes it really easy to come off sorry i'm watching my eyes and not the screen but i just wanted to talk about this it's extremely flex i mean look at this part like this part is is quite bendy um which is intriguing to me uh, it doesn't you know even though it's barely holding on with just a little bit of grab right there, it feels like any type of, you know, pressure in that direction isn't going to mess it up. Now, this one warped just a little bit, but I'm going to hope that's going to be okay for the client. If not, I'll print another one. But I got one more uh, to print. I think it's just this handle by itself. Oh, I see. There's a round handle and a square handle, and they're one of either side, so they might be picking which one's better. Um, but, yeah, this stuff is really cool. I mean, like, it's, it's pretty stiff printed together i mean i'm not gonna lie this right here is is quite stiff um i'm not able to like easily deform it like i would be with this so maybe printed thick it's pretty stiff but printed thin it's quite bendable that's kind of cool um i did buy this on amazon for like i think it was 35 or 50 i think it might have been 50 bucks um 
somewhere in that range is what this type of filament goes for. It's a higher grade filament. Uh, but yeah, if you're looking for something, I mean, this might be a good choice for like armor, but not, you know, I wouldn't want to print a helmet and, and have it leak like this. That would be a whole lot of cleanup. You know, this isn't too much for a small part, but if I had to do like, you know, a 22 hour print with one of these and it was leaking like this, I would really tune this in and fix it first. I would do a lot of tests to, to get this to the point to where it'll print cleanly. Um, but I mean, this could be a good option. I mean, a lot of people are printing in PLA. You drop your helmet once and it breaks. You know, if, if you hadn't printed in this, it might not break. It might just take a dent or a flex. I mean, I, I don't know. I'd be curious to print one of these and, and actually break it. I've been meaning to for a long while do some strength tests. I've got some ideas on the strength tests um, that I want to do differently than other people. I want to incorporate the metal plating into it too. Um, so it would look like something where I would do like several different brands of filament, several or several different brands of the same type of filament, several different brands of different types of filament, several different designs, and then several different metal plating. Um, so it's kind of a big undertaking and it might be too much for one video. I might have to do it over a series of videos or something. Um, and I'm, I don't know, I kind of worry about it because I, I just feel like that's going to be more production than what. I've done before, but maybe with some encouragement in the comments, if you'd like to see me do that, um, maybe I can, maybe I'll even bring someone on to do some editing for it, or I can figure out how to do it all in one shoot. I mean, if I, I'm thinking I'll just pre-print everything, and then I'll explain like how I printed everything, maybe in one video, and then in the next video, I'll do some basic pull tests, and then in the next video, we'll do some pull tests on like different designs or something. And then we'll do another pull test on uh, metal plated ones and then different designed metal plated ones. Because I've, I've got an idea where I want a metal plate like the standard um, like test pieces that everyone else is using. And then I want to make some designs in it specifically just put a bunch of holes in it and then let the metal plating go through the holes and see if that increases it anymore. I'm thinking uh, a holy part with heavy metal plating that fills all those holes will make it much stronger. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, um, yeah, let me know what you think about doing a, a specific strength test one day. Let me know what you think of this glass-filled nylon. It's kind of kind of interesting. I'm, I'm really digging how it its properties so far. So it's making me think. I, I, uh, I should have known better because the other parts I printed, they were a little bit thicker than this, but they weren't this thin, so I didn't realize just how elastic and forgiving it was. Um, so interesting. Let me know what your thoughts are, what you would use this for. If you would use this for a specific print or if you can think of something then you're like, man, I didn't know glass filled nylon would be good for that. Um, let me know what you think. And the support removal is super easy. Wow. That just came off really, really nice. And the surface finish on this one, that's a little hard to see in the camera lighting, is actually really, really nice. Aside from this one peeling just a smidgen on the edge, yeah, the bottom of it is great. So. All right, guys, long enough video. Thanks for watching. Staying till the end. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, the more comments you do, the more you encourage me to make more videos, the more videos I will make. So I appreciate that a lot. And um, we will see you in a uh, little bit, guys. Have a good day.